Hi, my name is Wendy Downing. I'm the pastor at the Steelville Presbyterian Church in Steelville, Missouri. And today is a service of the Lord's Day for May 24th, 7th Sunday of Easter, 2020. Before we start the service today, I'm going to ask you to have a pen and a piece of paper with you. We're going to use this during the sermon time, so I hope that you will have that ready for when the time comes. We usually begin our service with a meditation to kind of center in and get ready to worship. So if you'll please close your eyes, I will read the meditation to you. The world often fills us with anxiety. Too many choices to make. Too much drama from relationships. Too much going on in the world right now. Lord, it is enough to bring the strongest among us to our knees. That's where we should all be, on our knees, bringing it all to you in prayer, not wallowing in self-pity, being so nervous we can't sleep, or thinking you are absent or don't care. You care so much that you let us give it to you and carry it for us. Today, we come to take advantage of your offer to carry our anxiety. Let it be so. Amen. If you have a bulletin in front of you, you can respond with our call to worship. Otherwise, just listen. As we begin our worship, our call to worship, we worship to witness God's power. And the people respond, we worship to see God's glory in action. We worship to cast our cares before God. And the people respond, and let God pick them up and take them. God's care for us is eternal and strong. And the people respond, Let us show God our care in return by worshiping God in spirit and in truth, trusting God with all of who we are. And then we confess our sins before God, our corporate sins, <clears throat> together. So join me in the prayer of confession if you have a printed bulletin. We confess to you this day, O oh God, that our intentions for being in worship are not always pure. We don't always worship because we love you and want to be close to you. Sometimes we are here because it's expected of us or because we're trying to be a good example for those around us, but our heart is not in it. When anxiety and worry have plagued us, we wallow in it instead of turning it over to you for transformation. It's not what we expect you to it's not that we don't expect you to help us. Often it's because we are so used to handling things on our own that we don't even think of giving it to you. Forgive our short-sightedness about you and our independence from you. May we gratefully turn to you today for strength and comfort. Amen. And hear this assurance that God has pardoned you for your sin. God is our comfort, a present help in times of need. Because God knows us so well, God forgives our short-sightedness and our independence. Thanks be to God for God's forgiving presence in our lives. Let us now pray for God to illumine our hearts as we get ready to hear God's word. <clears throat> Let us pray. Oh God, when we struggle with questions of faith that we cannot solve, when we struggle with relationships and health issues and see evil, sickness, disaster, and war in our world, and don't know what to make of it. Help us to rest in your strong arms of love and to cast all our anxieties on you. Meet us in this time of worship with your amazing grace. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, our scripture for this morning comes from uh, 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 through 14, and Chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar that you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. And then chapter 5, starting with verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time, 
Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary the devil prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The sermon title is Casting Our Anxiety, Casting Out Our Anxiety. The seventh Sunday of Easter is that odd Sunday between Mother's Day and Pentecost that doesn't always show up on the church calendar. It depends on how late Easter is each year and how many Sundays remain between Easter and Pentecost. There's not always a seventh Sunday of Easter. The epistle today in our lectionary reading was from, Saint, was from 1 Peter. And since we just had Mother's Day and we've all been locked together with our families for a couple of months now, Repeat after me, I love my family, I love my family, I love my family. And we are in the middle of a pandemic. I thought the scripture about handling anxieties just might punch our ticket. How many of you have seen the cartoon movie, The Incredibles? It's a family of superheroes and they, have some, they all have some kind of superpowers that they use to help one another and the people around them. All of us would like to have lay claim to having an incredible family. We admit that we have our problems, but despite those problems and shortcomings, we still want the incredible family. And usually we think our families are pretty incredible. But we all have problems with our family, even God. And we can take comfort from the thought that even God had problems with God's kids. Remember the story in Genesis? After creating heaven and earth, God created Adam and Eve. And the first thing God said was, don't. And Adam replied, don't what? Don't eat the forbidden fruit, God said. Forbidden fruit? We got forbidden fruit? Hey, Eve, we've got forbidden fruit. No way. Yes, way. Don't eat that fruit, said God. Why? Because I'm your father and I said so, said God, wondering why he hadn't stopped creating after the elephants. A few minutes later, God saw his kids having an apple break and was angry and said, didn't I tell you not to eat the fruit? Uh-huh, replied Adam. Then why did you? I don't know, said Eve. She started it, said Adam. Did not, did too. Did not. Having had it with the two of them, God's punishment was that Adam and Eve would have children of their own. Thus the pattern was set and it has never changed. But there is reassurance in this story. If you've persistently and lovingly tried to give your children wisdom and they haven't taken it, don't be too hard on yourself. If God had trouble handling children, what makes you think it should be a piece of cake for you? Two weeks ago, we celebrated Mother's Day. It's a day we celebrate the, ide the Christian ideal of mothers and the Christian home. I gave up doing long, flowery sermons about the virtues of motherhood a long time ago. When I was young and naive, I had hoped that other families were a lot like Ozzie and Harriet, Father Knows Best, or Leave It to Beaver. But in reality, most families are more like the Simpsons. Everybody loves Raymond and the Osbournes of the 19, than they are like the 1950s idyllic family portrayals. Do you know that the perfect family does not exist? My daughter Courtney used to see this family at First Methodist Church in Sykeston, and she thought that they were the perfect family. Mom and dad were beautiful people, both sons were beautiful people, and everyone seemed to love and understand one another. But I'm sure that was only from afar. I'm sure they were a nice family, don't get me wrong, but I'll bet the boys got jealous of each other from time to time, showed sibling rivalry. Mom and Dad probably fought about the bills, TV shows, the kids, and whose turn it was to take out the trash from time to time. The perfect family is a myth. 
Families and people that make up families can change and be perfected, but there's really no such thing as the perfect family. Unfortunately, we aren't given an owner's manual when we enter into the marriage covenant, or when we have children, they don't come with an explanation or here's what to do with this child. We have to learn from our mistakes as parents, just like our parents had to learn from their mistakes. We also have to learn from, from scripture. And the scripture I read to you from 1 Peter has a good word for us today, a word that will solve a lot of problems in our individual lives as well as our families, a word that will help us be better parents and be better spouses. For me, verse 7 says it all. Cast your anxiety on him because he cares for you. This is what we're called to do as individuals, as parents and grandparents. We're called to cast our anxiety on God. Comedian Jerry Lewis said once he talked to his doctor about some of his problems, and when he finished, the doctor suggested to him, Jerry, don't worry. Jerry Lewis replied, Doc, how do you don't worry? It's a good question. How do you don't worry about the kids and grandkids? How do you don't worry about their future, your future, your job, their jobs, your health, their health? How do you not dread? How do you not be afraid? That's exactly what Peter was talking about. The only real answer is trust. You have to trust the second half of verse 7, which specifically, uh, very specifically, in relationship to your anxiety. The first half of the verse says, cast all your anxiety on God. And the second half gives the reason why. The second half of the verse says, because God cares for you. Notice it doesn't say God cares for the whole world and God cares for the United States of the United States of America, or Missouri, or Crawford County, or even Steelville. Scripture says, cast all your anxiety on God because God cares for you. This doesn't, it doesn't make any difference how rotten the day has been, or how many times you've blown it at being a parent, or being a child. It doesn't matter if you've been right or you've been wrong. It doesn't matter to God, because God cares for you. It's as if you are an only child in God's eyes. There's a story of an elderly woman who was so frightened by the possibility of an airplane crash that she would never fly. Finally, at the urging of her children in a far off city, she nervously boarded a plane and flew to visit them. When she got off the aircraft, she was greeted by her family who asked, well, how was the trip? And she replied, well, I guess it was all right. I didn't put my whole weight down the entire time we were in the air. She didn't trust the plane. She didn't trust the pilot. But when you put your trust in Christ and put everything in Christ's hands, you are claiming the second half of this verse as your own. You are putting the full weight of your anxieties and worries in Christ's hands. Once we trust completely, then we can throw out all of our anxieties on God I use the word throw because that's the real meaning of the word cast. The word is used only twice in the New Testament. Once here and once in Luke when it describes the disciples on Palm Sunday throwing or casting their robes on the donkey carrying Jesus to ride on. They literally threw their robes on the donkey, making a saddle. The donkey carried their robes as well as Christ. And God wants us to throw our anxieties on God. In other words, God is willing to carry our anxieties the same way a donkey carries baggage. God is willing to carry our baggage so that we don't have to. God wants to unburden our hearts and our souls and our minds and our spirits so we can devote our lives to loving God, loving our children and those around us. Parenting is both good and bad. It has its moments filled with joy and laughter, and it's ha it has its moments that are filled with angst, trials, and tribulations. We remember the highs and the lows. The highs give us wings, and the lows leave scars. And if not scars, then certainly strained muscles and a stronger faith. 
Oftentimes those hurts and scars break us but only because we haven't turned to the one who calls us to share the burden of our journey. The one who's gone before us and prepared a way for us to go. The one who knows the route and has prepared the route. The one who mourns when we take our own, our own way and then cringes with the unnecessary pain that we experience because we've turned to our own way. This one who continually whispers his love for us, who calls us, constantly reminding us that love, reminding us to bring all of our cares and anxiety to him and to leave them at his feet where he can carry them for us. How many times have we come with our laundry list of hurts and anxieties, our worries over our friends and family, job, faith, school, nation, neighbor, health, you name it, and we worry about it. We list them all. We lay them out one by one like we're packing for a trip and want to make sure we don't forget anything. But there they lay, right in front of God, right there in front of us. We feel light as air. We breathe easier. Our hearts and souls sigh in the relief of the burden, the relief of those burden, the burden of anxieties. We see the delight in God's eyes that we have finally brought it to God. And God smiles. All we have to do is turn away and leave the anxieties there for God to tend to. But what do we usually do? Well, sometimes even before a buy your leave or a thank you, Lord, we gather everything up, put it safely and carefully back into the suitcase of our soul, and then we drag it along with us. That's not what God wants for our lives. God doesn't tease us like we do kids when we say, give me five, and then pull our hand away. God isn't like that. God is like, well, sometimes there really isn't enough words to describe what God is like to us. The truth is, there will be pain and struggles in this world. But remember what Jesus said in John 16, verse 33. In the world you face persecution, but take courage, I have conquered the world. Our God is a loving parent who wants to hold us, to cradle us like a loving mother or father. In a very real and deep theological sense, God wants to kiss our scraped knees, mend our broken hearts and spirits, and tell us that it's going to be all right. Come to our loving parent this morning. Really open up that line of communication Trust the fact that God cares for you so that you can experience being able to cast all of your cares on God. Today, I would like for us to really cast our cares on God. I asked each of you before we started this morning to have a piece of paper and a pen ready this morning. I want you to write down what it is that's burdening you most right now on that piece of paper. Then I want you to come symbolically this morning and lay it at the foot of the cross. Close your eyes and imagine giving that paper to Jesus. Leave it there for God to deal with on your behalf. Don't look back. Don't pick it up again before you leave. Cast all your cares on God. Close your eyes, go to the cross, and leave it there. Let us pray. Jesus, Lord of the Church, we pray for all who suffer for your sake in today's world. We pray for those who cannot assemble for worship, those who are not permitted access to the Bible, those who are punished or persecuted for practicing their discipleship in your name. Protect those Christians who experience hatred or ostracism by their family, neighbors, or community. We who know little or no suffering for our faith pray for those who do and wonder if there might come a day when we will. May all who suffer for their faith know the comfort of sharing Christ's sufferings. Spirit of God, raise up witnesses to the gospel. We pray for the Spirit's power in bringing renewed life and energy into our church. May God call forth pastors, missionaries, teachers, and lay leaders for the church. Bring to us a new spirit of prayer and devotion to serve you. 
so that together we might serve your mission in the world. We ask for your power, O oh God, to resist the forces of evil in our world. Grant us discipline and self-control in the face of temptation. Curb our desires for fame and fortune that would lead us to harm others. And give us healthy gratitude for who we are that will keep us from the need to impress others. We are your children, O oh God, and we ask that you will keep us steadfast in our faith. Calm our anxieties, loving God, so that we might now look to you for all of our needs and to the needs of others. We remember before you today those we carry in our hearts, our loved ones, family, and friends, whose names we list before you now with our prayer list. We have church members who are undergoing surgeries. We have people who are having biopsies. We have people who are waiting for those things. We have a funeral coming up, and there are just so many people right now, Lord, with the coronavirus running rampant through our, our United States that need your loving and healing touch. We place them before you. Embrace each one in your never-ending mercy. Fill each with your abundant love. Heal, forgive, reconcile, restore, and bring wholeness to our lives. Grant that each person we named might know and confess your great love in Jesus Christ and offer you their own prayers of thanksgiving. And hear us now as we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We've been asking everybody to send in their tithes and offerings to the church during this time of pandemic when we're not meeting together but having virtual worship. And a lot of people have been good about that, and we really appreciate it. But we also want to pray over your offering. So this morning we will have an offering prayer, even though we don't have a plate in front of us. But know that your offerings are being blessed. Let us pray. Lord, we would rather be together. You know that. Because you created us for community. But since that is not possible right now, show us new ways to be community for one another. As we continue to reach out in new ways, we thank you for those who are able to continue giving during this pandemic and ask that you will bless and use these offerings that are being sent to the church so that our many ministries in the community can continue. Bless the gifts and bless the givers. Amen. And now as we conclude our worship, hear the benediction. Leave this worship experience today as light as a feather, released from the anxieties and worries that each day brings with it. Cast your anxieties on God continually and trust that you are not alone. Go in God's great mercy. Amen. Just a quick announcement that the session voted after getting the survey back from everybody that we are going to continue with virtual worship services until the next uh, June session meeting, which is June 17th. So the 14th of June will we will stay with virtual worship until at least then. We'll decide again on the 17th whether to push forward. Um, our survey had more than half of you not ready to come back yet, and that's understandable. But when we do start back, we will be uh, having live stream services for those who don't feel ready to come back yet. So you will continue to be in my prayers and my thoughts. Love to you all. <laughs>